My name is Amanda Simaes. I grew up in Pennsylvania, but I've lived here in Asheville for about four years now. I work as a development editor at an online textbook company. So, how do you stay in touch with faraway friends? Bridget, Ashley, and Kelsey are three friends I met through a one-year volunteer program we did together in 2010. And we found one strategy to be in daily communication with, with each other for at least a chunk of each year. We have annual contests. Here's how it works. Bridget and I compete over something, and Ashley and Kelsey are the judges. We set some type of daily challenge, and every day we need to send photographic evidence to both our opponent and the judges to prove we completed it. And we just keep going until someone caves in and quits, forgets, or breaks the rules. The prize is always one beer. So basically, it's just a quirky way of four friends staying in touch. Like the sisterhood of the traveling pants, except instead of mailing each other pants, we viciously compete with each other in the hopes of winning a very small quantity of alcohol. <laughs> First, we started with hair contests. Pretty simple. Every day, each of us has to do our hair in a different hairstyle until one of us runs out of hairstyles that we're willing to be seen in public with. And you learn a lot about yourself when you find yourself stealing flowers off the side of the road by Merriman to make a flower crown. Or when you wake up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you have to make a decision about which is the better option. Do you want to go to work and spend all day interacting with your classy coworkers with your hair styled like a Dr. Seuss character? Or do you want to swallow your pride and quit a hair contest? Obviously, I opted to go to work with the pigtails. So, so uh, as you can see, and after that, we moved on to a poem contest. But my favorite contest was the one we did in 2015, and that was the pea food contest. Every day, we each had to eat a different food that began with the letter P. And... <laughs> and so, we, and, and, um, we set strict rules. And no brand names, and once a food's been used, it's off the table. That means that you can plan ahead to some extent, but you have no control over what food your opponent is going to use. Once I stayed up super late preparing this really elaborate pudding, both to bring to work the next day and to use as my day 11 food submission. I'm talking layers of espresso pudding, fresh whipped cream, crushed chocolate wafers, chopped toffee bits topped with peanut butter cups that had homemade flags. And then while I was making the pudding, Bridget, uses pudding as her day 10 submission, saying a photo of that. <laughs> Seriously? <sighs> Guess I better go round up some pico de gallo instead. <laughs> all in all, though, the pea food contest starts out easy. Plums, pears, peaches, pineapples, the low-hanging fruits of the pea food world. But then, once pizza, pasta, pesto, potatoes, pinto beans, and pork are off the table, that's when things start to get interesting. So. Did I spend more money on food than I usually would, as well as an inordinate amount of time on strategic meal planning? I mean, yeah, probably. But did I eat fantastically well and nearly every day embark on an exciting new food adventure? Absolutely. As my competitive instincts kicked in, I went to increasingly great lengths to ensure a continuous supply of pea foods in my pantry. I scoured the internet for ideas and combed through every aisle of every grocery store, farmer's market, and butcher shop I could find. I learned how to make sarasupa, which is Greek fish soup, pirnik, which is Polish gingerbread, and pupusas, which are Salvadorian stuffed tortillas. I spotted a pepino melon in the exotic fruit section of a grocery store. What's a pepino melon? Who knows? It costs $4 for one small melon, so it must be delicious. That assumption turned out to be false. They're disgusting. They taste like the sad love child of a mealy honeydew mixed with a cucumber, but I ate it anyway. Anytime I'd go to a restaurant, I'd immediately start skimming through the menu in search of pea food words. If it's day 70 and rhubarb has something on their menu called plancha seared local romaine with egg, bacon, and mustard, I guess I'm ordering plancha seared local romaine with egg, bacon, and mustard. I'll Google what plancha means later. My brain was so programmed to respond to pea food words that sometimes I would just react to words that weren't even foods. Catering services available, 24-hour cancellation policy! <sighs> can't eat policies. <sighs> Weeks turned into months. Birthdays passed. Seasons changed. Time after time, I would say to myself, surely this is going to be the last week. I mean, I wasn't about to quit, but I figured Bridget would. But Bridget was tenacious, and the photos kept coming. Our contest began increasingly lengthy, but this one was breaking records even for us. Me 
Meanwhile, Bridget's totally stepping up her game. Panda maze, pillow cookies, powdered arco tea, porcupine meatballs. She found a prickly pear and gelato made out of pawpaw, which are like the holy grails of the pea food world. I couldn't find them anywhere. I thought they just existed in Jungle Book lyrics or something. <sighs> but I had a dilemma. In a couple weeks, I was going on a trip where I was going to be the guest in the house of someone I hadn't even met. And what am I supposed to say? Oh, I'm totally not picky about what we eat for dinner, as long as it's either piccalilli, piri piri, or a seven layer Bavarian cake called Prince of Morgenten Torta. <sighs> so I've resigned myself to quitting if this contest lasted past October 14th. The best I could do was to continue to appear inexhaustible in the hopes that Bridget would quit on her own accord. But Bridget never quit. So I graciously forfeited submitting both Pastelli and a Pilsner as my last hurrah. Now this contest lasted 80 days, which means that between the two of us, we ate 161 different pea foods. Also, I'd like to point out that even though I lost the pea food contest, I've won three out of five of our contests, so I'm still in the lead overall. But of course what matters to me about this contest isn't the free beer at the end, but the fact that it's a tradition with people I care about. It's not that surprising that Bridget, Ashley, Kelsey, and I became close friends when we worked together because spending all day, every day in a high stress school environment makes for easy bonding. But it's not such a given that we would have continued to stay close after our program ended and we all got jobs in different states and no longer had lives in common in any sense. So I don't take these friendships for granted. And if it takes eating polenta porridge and pilchards to stay close, I do it any day. <laughs>